good for you to be here. I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, hey, whether you're in the room or whether you're spread out all over this uh, globe, oftentimes on our Sunday morning, we, we see people everywhere from uh, over in Asia to all the way to LaGrange, North Carolina. And so, uh, so I'm excited for you to be here in the room, for you guys to join us online. And I believe that God has uh, a good, uh, encouraging word for you and I this morning, something that will help us right where we are. You know, sometimes lately I feel like I keep, I keep kind of hitting uh, rinse and repeat on, on, on what I'm hearing God say. So uh, all I can do is say what he says until, until we hear it. Amen. Uh, so this is probably a familiar sounding message, but maybe with a little bit of a twist, because I think it's important no matter where you are on everything that's going on, just the fact that you're, just the fact that you're in our nation where there's so much uh, turmoil, division, uh, just a bunch of stuff, right, going on, that it's important that you and I understand that we can be sure in unsure situations. That you and I, because of who Christ is, that we can be absolutely sure, even in the most unsure moments in our life. So whether you're uh, unsure about politics, whether you're unsure about uh, disease, whether you're unsure about a personal uh, issue you've got going on, it doesn't matter because this applies across the board, that you can be sure even when you're unsure. And that doesn't sound exactly like it's logical, but I hope to walk you through some scriptures this morning that will help you realize that. A few weeks ago, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm really bad with the holidays, but the last three-day weekend we had, Labor Day I think it was, um, my wife and I had our two granddaughters, and we were really excited to be able to spend the day with them. So we decided to do something that we love to do, which is to go to the woods. And so we decided to go to a place that... I'd never been before. Uh, I've driven by this place. It's called Raven Rock State Park. It's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away. Uh, you may have been there. I just had always driven past it going somewhere else. So I thought, well, let's go check that out. And so we got in the car. We got the, the girls in the car. We headed up the, up the road, and we're thinking we're just going to go on a, a pretty nice hike, which many of you who've been here a while and you've heard my stories about when I'm in the woods, you're probably already thinking, oh, no, this is another got lost in the woods story, right? Because you know me, and it is yet another, right? Uh, where we go into the woods, and we go to see, and there's a picture over here, this, this huge, I mean, I don't know what to call it. I guess it's an exposed mountain, right? Uh, I just took this picture. It was very odd. This is like the rock is what you go to see. I thought the tree was cool, too. So you see all kinds of things when you're out in nature. But this all sits right beside um, the Cape Fear River. It's beautiful. It's, the rock is just, you know, bigger than, it's just, it's hard to imagine, you know, that this thing goes on and on and on up the river. So it's big, majestic rock. But before I got there, I planned to head there, and we were in the parking lot. And I thought, I'm going to look at the map. They're nice. They give you this sort of, sort of map, not a real map, but just a map with trails on it. And so I decided this is the way we go. And so we head out and we start walking down a trail and it looked like it was going to take us where we wanted to for my perception on the map. And we started walking down a trail. It was probably about 10 minutes into the hike because we had to wait about 30 minutes to get into the park because there was no parking left in the park. It was packed. Everybody wanted to go outside. And I thought it was interesting about 10 minutes in as we walked down this path that uh, we had the woods all to ourselves. There was not another soul, not a squirrel, a deer, a bird, nothing. Just us. And as we're walking, and I'm, I'm looking at the map, I'm like, yeah, this has got to be it, you know. And I don't know. There's, I mean, there's only a couple other ways. So we're walking, and I, we cross a creek, and I'm thinking there should be a creek on the map. No creek. Oh, that's okay, you know. I began to get unsure about where we were headed. Not just because... I didn't see the creek on the map because I know my history with woods and maps. And sometimes these things turn out poorly and you strain relationships over these trips sometimes after miles and miles of saying it's just around the corner. But I began to get unsure, but I wasn't going to admit it because I am that guy that will not ask for any directions. So I, I, we start walking, and I know, and I, I turn to my oldest granddaughter and I say, hey, 
um, do you feel like we're lost? And she does exactly what she didn't need to do. And she turns around and she refers to Phyllis as Mimi and says, hey, Mimi, Papa thinks we're lost. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, here we go. I'm outnumbered, and Phyllis says from the back, I know we're lost, Hallie. We're in the woods with Papa. <laughs> I just follow him because I love him. And I was like, that's really sweet, but we ain't lost this time. I'm telling you. And we start walking, and it wasn't much longer. I start to see a clearing up ahead. And I'm thinking, yes, I've never been here before, but there's got to be a clearing wherever this big rock is that we're looking for. And I'm like, yep, I'm going to get there. And I got up to the edge of it, and I'm thinking, this is going to be great. And I look out over the parking lot, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, boy. Another story, right? But, but the whole while, I kind of was unsure, so I wasn't totally blown away when I ended up. All I did was take a little half-mile hike through the woods, totally not. But once I saw what I had done, I saw it on the map, and I thought, oh, I went exactly uh, left when I should have gone right. So I knew where we should go, and we started on our hike. But I started to think about that. In, in real terms, what does that feel like in everyday life? What about when I'm on a project or I'm working towards something or I'm at my job or I'm at school and I start to look around and I notice something's just ain't right. There's maybe a creek where there shouldn't be a creek and, and maybe I'm, I'm just feeling just a little bit like maybe I'm, maybe I'm not in the right spot or, or what about in a, in a relationship where he's got something, you know, where you, you think there should be a lot of people here and there's no one. Right? It's just us in these whole woods, but there was hundreds of parking spots full of people. And not everybody can be walking the other trails. Most people want to go see the big rocks. So I said, well, you know, I start to see the signs. And I think you and I start to see signs, too, where we know that in a certain area, maybe in generally, that we start to get this feeling that, you know, I'm not in um, a place of dread or panic or anxiety yet, but I'm not exactly sure where I'm at. And I think it's what we do in those moments that help us to be confident even when we're not confident. And I want to pray, and then I want to jump into some scriptures, and I hope that you find yourself somewhere in some area in this word where God's telling us that, that it's important that we don't lose our confidence even when we're not exactly sure. Amen? So let's pray. And we'll jump into the word. Father, I thank you this morning, God, for your word, for how you lead us and guide us. God, how our total confidence can be in you. That, God, even when we miss, we're okay if we're trusting in you. So, Father, I pray that you'd be the, be the one who teaches us this morning. Holy Spirit, be the loudest voice in the life of anyone who hears anything we share today. Let your word prevail in every word that's spoken, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so in Hebrews 10, verse 35, there's a, there's a statement that the Apostle Paul makes. He says, do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. So if you highlight or if you, you know, uh, tap verses in your, in your online Bible or underline, whatever you want to do, I would, if, I, if it were me, I would, I would underline, uh, don't throw away this confident trust. Don't throw it away. You know, one of the things that is true about you and I is that oftentimes, even when we're confident in our actions, we don't really know how it's going to work out, do we? I, I heard a statement by a guy who I revere as being very wise, very smart. Uh, he's a valued voice in my life. And he made the funniest statement the other day when he began to speak on an issue. He said, he started to write on a, on a uh, dry erase board, and he said, he said, now don't take this as gospel. Uh, I'm just a chemist making stuff up right now, right? So by trade, he's a chemist. He's a pastor, but he's like, He's basically saying this out there that I'm just thinking out loud here, right? Uh, and acknowledging the fact that sometimes when we're speaking as though we have authority or if we're acting as though we know what the outcome is going to be, a lot of times we're just a fill in the blank, a chemist, a farmer, you know, a, a social worker, a doctor, whatever. We're just making stuff up, verbally processing through a lot of the things we want to happen. So life, even if you're really, really good at what you do, life is still trial and error. 
Michael Jordan still missed the free throw every now and then, right? So nothing's a given. And if you and I realize that, 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 that we can be sure of ourselves, even though we know that the outcome still is not determined, then it drives me personally into this place of confident trust in the Lord. That, that even when I go in this direction, that if I don't end up in this direction, that if I have confident trust in the Lord, then it will be all right either way. Even when I miss, even when I take the wrong trail and it, and it, and it causes me 20 minutes worth of walking, there was still enjoyment in the walking. Does this make sense? That, that even though that wasn't the big trail with the big rock, there was some pretty neat stuff along the way. And, and there was benefit in all of it. And so it, nothing, nothing when you're unsure is worse than just becoming paralyzed by fear. You don't want to do that. You want to hold on and don't throw away this confident trust. And, and when I read these scriptures, I, I dig a little bit deeper. And I want you to this morning and think that it's up to you whether you hold on to the confident trust in Christ that you have. It's not something that's a given. That if I don't guard my trust, if I don't purposely set my mind to trusting what Jesus says about everything, then I'm probably going to loosen my grip and end up uh, purposely or inadvertently throwing away the confident trust. He says, remember the great reward it brings you. That when I trust in the Lord, that there's this great reward in doing that. You notice that he talked about the great reward being in trusting, having a confident trust in Christ, not in having a confident trust in me or a confident trust in a certain outcome or a confident trust when I do this great exploit. The, the great reward comes in that no matter how it works out, I kept my, my confident trust in the Lord. Does this make sense? Because what is constant is Christ and his word. That's constant. Everything else could vary. And I think it's important for us to realize it and for us to realize that the scripture has what I would consider one of the most powerful uh, passages in the scripture for me personally that's probably changed my life more than anything. That's a lot of pre pre prerequisites there for that verse. But, but check this out in, in Matthew 6.34. This is, all, this is like a command. You know, you don't get too many, you don't get a lot of commands in the New Testament. So don't worry about tomorrow. Not you shouldn't worry about tomorrow. Not maybe you should consider not worrying about tomorrow. Don't do it. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So that when you start banking on tomorrow's trouble, you don't even have the strength to deal with today's trouble. And just like if you get in trouble with a loan shark and you get behind and they come looking to break your bones because you can't pay up, that's the kind of spiritual life you end up leading because the enemy will never let you out of the debt if he can keep you borrowing from tomorrow's troubles. Because we don't even know what they really are, do we? We, we know what could be, and we like to think we're really smart, and we like to think we listen to smart people, but no one in this room has has any idea of what could come tomorrow. We, we know what our day will probably look like, but we don't really know. We don't really understand. And oftentimes we look into the future and we're stressed and we're worried. And what that does is that puts us in debt to uh, just looking at today's trouble, focusing on, you know what, no matter what this looks like, the Lord will take care of it. So it's not apathy, but it's also not this this lifetime process of allowing yourself to worry and be burdened by everything that's going on in life. You know, you and I are baited into fear now. Fear is the number one. Fear's always been a good selling point, but everybody's selling fear now. Everybody. You know, it used to be back in the day that, that, that you know, fear was, it wasn't like this, um, it wasn't like this blatant uh, salesmanship based in fear, but now it is. Now it is, you know, you got it, right? I'm sure Pastor Nick has gotten three calls this week telling him that he's in danger because his car warranty is just about to expire, or it's expired. We have an urgent message for you, Pastor Nick. You're driving a car that is out of warranty. Doom, right? Give us your money. And you can fill in the blank on anything. 
It's all fear-based. But yet the scripture says, don't worry. Don't worry. It doesn't mean be irresponsible. You need to buy that warranty, buddy. I'm just kidding. It means, it means that you have to be responsible, but you can't give yourself over to fear. Make sense? Psalm 34, 4 says this. It says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. So here's the thing. I don't want to just tell you don't be fearful. I want to give you the solution to fear. And this is it. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Why is it important to be free from fear? Have you ever thought of that? That, that fear doesn't feel good, but feeling good really doesn't do anything either. So being free of fear is not about just feeling okay because you're free of fear. Because as soon as you get rid of your fear, the enemy will just give you anxiety. Once you get free of that, he'll give you worry. And after you get rid of that, he'll give you something. He'll, tr he'll happily trade you a cold for the flu. So as you work your way through this in your own strength, and you become free in your own flat refusal to be fearful, then he'll just give you something else. But you notice when the Lord frees you from something, you're actually free. Who the Lord sets free is what? Free indeed. And so when he frees me from my fears, now I'm not enslaved by my fear. I'm not limited by my fear. I'm not, I'm not, my attention isn't, is diverted away from my fear and onto the moment. It's, it's, it, it takes away this paralyzing feeling of being fearful all the time. And now I'm available to what the Lord wants me to do in this moment. So, so the, here's the funny thing is that we're all so unsure of this moment that we try to escape the moment. When the Lord's saying, don't escape the moment, I have you in this moment. That scripture, for such a time as this, that it would have been easy for Queen Esther to, to worry about everything that was going to happen and go back to her room and just be pretty and be the, the king's wife. But, but, but her uncle said that, that you, you, were, you were designed for such a time as this. And I believe that you're designed for such a time as this. And you have to be ready to rise up and you have to be ready to stand, and you have to be ready to be available to what the Lord's saying to do, or you'll miss the moment. And just to be honest with you, I, I don't need you to miss the moment. The, the person sitting next to you, you might not even know them, but they don't need you to miss this moment. That, that we're all here collectively, the body of Christ, for this moment. Because people are dying. People are going to hell. They're terrified. Some of them are actually in hell now, a form of it, right? They're totally enslaved to the, to the they're, they're, they're totally, um, they're dancing uh, to the tune of the enemy. So much so that they've got, a, they've got a hellishness in their life. You probably know some people like this. It's horrible. And we have to be compassionate people who realize that I'm just going to live today. I'm going to trust in what God says. I'm going to be sure about him, even though I'm unsure about everything else. And I'm going to be available for him to use me however he wants, to reach out a helping hand, to speak an encouraging word, to prophesy over their life, speak God's word instead of the will of the enemy over their life. I'm going to stand with Jesus when he said, I came to destroy the works of the enemy. Well, that's why I'm here, too. Amen? And that's why you're here. Being joint heirs, being family, being one with Christ means that we're one with purpose with Christ. And so you and I can't sit here, wring our hands, and worry about everything else while everything's collapsing around us. It's a horrible escape because it's no escape at all. Bring freedom that Christ brings to you when he says, I free you from your fears, is now you have a, the ability to pay attention and hold on to that confident trust in the Lord that he's given you. Hold on to it. Carry it with you. Walk in it. Live in it. Amen? Anybody with me? Yeah, it was awful quiet. Psalm 60, I'm sorry, Psalm 34, 4 says this. Well, it already said it, didn't it? 
picked the wrong one. Psalm 62, 8 says this. And here's, here's another to do for you. If you want to write, this is what I have to do this week. Oh, uh, oh my people. Anybody his people? Raise your hand. Lisa, get some blood flowing. There you go. I'm, that's, I'm qualified. I'm his people. Oh, my people. Trust in him at all times. When? All times. Not some of the time. Not, not as long as the news isn't bad. Not when, you know, you're worried about something. Trust in him all the time. Now, this is the hard one. Pour out your heart to him. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Selah, it says in some translations. Selah is it's a musical term. And it's, this, it's, it's an interlude. It's a pause. It's like, it's like don't, don't, don't run by this. Don't run by this. Hold on a second. Pause. Maybe rewind. Maybe let it sit. Pour out your heart to him, for God is your refuge. Now I'm going to just say this because I'm good at it. I could pour my, my heart out to my wife. I can, pour, I can pour my heart out to some friends. But have you ever noticed really how hard it is to pour your heart out to God? I don't know how have you tried it. Have you really just went, gosh, Man, God, I'm worried. Because now I'm going, oh, I just told God I'm doing something he told me not to do. Like he didn't know, you know. Got to make a good impression with God. Don't want to tell him that I'm worried, stressed, doubtful. I can't see where he's at. I can't hear his voice. I'm, I'm stressed out. This person's driving me crazy. We'll tell each other. In fact, I had a lady... I didn't know her for 11 seconds, and she started just pouring her heart out. I'm thinking, you need a friend, and I needed to go somewhere else. That's what happened, right? Because I can't fix it. I'm not her refuge. Your friend can give you some comfort, but he can't give you the comfort that comforts comfort. He can't, he can't answer questions that don't have answers. You're not, you, you and I need to realize that, that what God's saying is, listen, that if you'll come to me and you'll pour that heart out to me, then I can take all that, the potter, and me, the clay, and he can shape it. He can begin to form it. But what do I want to do? I want him to just know it, deal with it, and just let me know when he's done. I, I don't want the relational part of it because that, that's hard for me. And, and, and this scripture is saying, listen, by saying Selah, listen, slow down. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. All times. When it looks like it's going your way, when it doesn't look like it's going your way. When the thing works out and when the thing doesn't work out. When something bad happens and when something good happens. When everything just seems totally stagnant and when life is flying by you so fast, your head's spinning. Trust him. In every moment. In the, in, in the tremendous victory and in the tragedy. Trust him. Trust him. Going back to Hebrews 10. You know, it, it talks about that confident trust, but if you get the context of, of maybe a couple verses before Hebrews 10, 35, Paul's commending them because they, because they suffered well, because they, they took beatings and they comforted the other believers who had taken a beating when they didn't. He, he, he was uh, patting them on the back because they were jailed and their possessions were all taken from them and they endured it with joy. That's the context of that. We're all like, yeah, confident trust. Well, start beating us. See how confident we are, right? Start hitting me with a baseball bat. I'm, I'm hoping my confident trust would hold up, but let's see how that goes. So, so when we're facing what is, frankly for us, a lot of confusion but I don't, we're not getting thrown in jail yet. We're not getting beat yet. We're not uh, suffering at the level they were suffering at. But they did it with joy. Why? Because they had such a trust in God that even a beating, somehow, he was, he was there with them. 
And I'm thinking, Lord, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Because now a bad weather forecast can knock me off. You know, it's going to rain tomorrow. Oh, man, there's my joy, right? And I'm like, but nobody's beat me over it. Nobody's jailed me over it. And he follows verse 35 where he says, listen, don't throw it away. Hold on to that confident trust. There's a great reward in it. And he says this. He says, because patient endurance is what you need right now. Patient endurance is what you need right now. And I think that something gets lost in us that, that we do hear a lot of, you know, I, I love the fact that we live in an era where, where preachers and teachers encourage us through the word and they tell us good things. But I don't want to ever get to the point where we're saying, listen, everything is going to be so rosy that you'll never face a tough day. You will. Just keep breathing. Keep waking up every day and you'll run into one. And there are times like now where a lot of Stuff is all over the place. I can't say it's good or bad because it depends on how you view it. But at the end of the day, we all know that some patient endurance would do us good. That, that, that what we thought, how many of y'all thought way back in, in March when we started all this uh, COVID stuff that it would be over in a, in a little bit? Oh, a lot of us did. I, look, I was being crazy. And, and, <laughs> and I told our staff, I said, guys, I... This may last through August. And everybody went, <gasps> right? I don't know if I was just being doomsday-ish. Or, I told them, that's not the Lord talking. That's just me. I want to be prepared if it even lasts through August. Now, who knows, man? You know? Here we are at the end of August, and we're taught now. It depends on who you listen to, you know? The second wave, you know? It's never going, whatever. I don't know. What do I know, though? I know that, that the God who conquered death, hell, and the grave, still did. I know that he loves me. I know he's on my side. I know he promises to never leave me, to never forsake me. And in all of it, I know he tells me, listen, son, pour your heart out to me. I'm the refuge you're looking for. You want a place of safety? It's me. Doesn't mean you won't get beat or thrown in jail or get sick or whatever. You're going to face trials and tribulations, but the problem is, is who do you have with you? Who do you have with you? I've had some really bad days, but what lingers in my mind past the bad day is who was with me. Who was with me in the room when this happened? You know, that matters. And I always want to be able to say that the Lord was with me. He is with me. I just want to make sure I remember he's with me. He's there. Sometimes you just got to pay attention, and I have to pay attention and remember he's there. All right? So here's the thing. I'm going to close with this. Proverbs 3, verse 24, starts this way. It says, I don't know how many of y'all would like this. This is a good promise. You could go to bed without fear, and you'll lie down and sleep soundly. Anybody down for that? Yeah? I'm, I love a good night's sleep. You know how much you can find out if you, if you uh, love a good night's sleep is sleep on the floor and don't get one. And you'll all of a sudden appreciate a good night's sleep. You can go to bed without fear. You can lie down and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. You don't have to be afraid of that. Why? For the Lord is your security. He'll keep your foot from being caught in a trap. See, listen, guys. Here's your inspirational moment. That if you follow Christ, you don't have to live playing defense. You don't have an enemy that is nipping at your heels where you're barely getting away from his traps. You, in Christ, sail above those things if you want to. That you need to understand that you will have trouble, you will have tough days. It doesn't make you immune to anything. But what you have to keep reminding yourself, what you have to keep holding on to is that confident trust that no matter how I feel, no matter how it looks, no matter what it seems like, even, and I'm telling you, even on your worst day, trusting in him has its reward.
And he tells us in his word to be careful as we navigate life, not to throw that away. Don't, don't just turn it loose. Hold on to it. So my question for you this morning is this, who are you trusting in? Really ask yourself this question because it matters. This isn't some silly preacher question to get you to engage. I want you to ask yourself, who are you placing your confident trust in? Is it the news? Is it, is it the doctor? Is it your friend? Is it your family? Yourself? Because here's, the, here's just the raw truth. That one of God's character traits is that he is not going to share the singular place that he has in your life. You, can, you, you have to trust him more than you trust anything else. You have to trust him more than you trust yourself. You have to trust him more than you trust Google. You have to trust him more than your doctor, your banker, your lawyer, your fill in the blank. You have to trust him that way. Because if not, and, and I've done this in my life, so please don't feel condemned if you do. If not, we begin to treat God like a contractor that we call when something's broken. How many times in my own life have I gotten to a place when it was a mess and then finally said, oh God, and begin to pour my heart out to him? See, here's the interesting thing. He even answered me then. He even answered me then. But how much better is my life when it's not at that point, when I realize that he's my refuge, that he's the place that I can find and put my life in that actually smooths out all the other chaos. It, 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 it kind of makes the path plain. It, the trail is, is clearly marked. And even when it's not, I have the one who made the trail, the one who made the woods, and the one who made me. And I don't have to worry because it doesn't matter. You know, I would hope that my family felt like, because, you know, they didn't fear probably because they know that I always end up finding my way. I've never lost them in the woods for good yet, right? So remember, you know, if you're ever in the woods with me, it might not look good, but we'll get there sometime, some way, even if it's in the back of a pickup truck that we pitch a ride on to get back to where we're supposed to be. And when they remember that, they can, they can not worry about being lost. And it's the same way with me and with Christ, that no matter where I've been, no matter what I've seen, no matter what I've encountered, I remember that he's never left me lost, never left me stranded, never left me alone, nor can he, because he said he wouldn't. And that's where my confident trust in him comes. And I hope that you begin to grab onto this. And if your trust is somewhere else, in someone else, in something else, then shift it. This is not some message that you can just go, oh, that, that was good. No, if, if your trust, if you don't find your trust placed squarely in, in Christ, then, then all week just demand that you put your trust in him. When you go to pour your heart out somewhere, pour it out to Christ. When you go and you start to trust what you read or what someone says or, or what you hear, then push it all away and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in you no matter what. I'm going to trust in you. Trust in you, trust in you, trust in you. Because he's the only one that has it all together and under control. Amen? So I might feel out of control, but he's not. And my friends, that is the way you can be sure, even when you're unsure, is your trust being in firmly in Christ. Amen? I hope this helps. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, that's your number one decision. We can't really talk about trusting him if you don't trust him really with your life first. And so if you're here, if you're online, if you're hearing this somewhere, then I would invite you this morning to trust him as your savior. I'm going to pray a prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's the fact that you know on the inside it's time for you to place your trust in him. 
as your Savior, to follow him, to give your life to him for good this time. And if that's you, just pray this prayer out loud with me. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. I'm asking you to forgive them. I'm asking you to make me your son or your daughter. I'm asking you to make me one with Jesus. Lord, teach me to follow you. Fill me with your spirit and help me, God, to place my confident trust in you no matter what because you are my Lord and my Savior. I profess that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give those people a hand that, that pray that prayer. That's awesome. You know, you know, if that was you, uh, I would encourage you to do this. Uh, if you're online, click the link that says connection card and let us know that you prayed that prayer. If you're in the room, there's some paper cards you can pick up. Drop them at the desk as you go. But guys, this is, this is the big deal here, right? That, that you are born in a moment for impact. You might not believe that. You might believe that you're just here to survive. I don't believe that. I believe that every single one of you have a purpose and a plan to carry out today. So listen closely to what the Lord's telling you to do and respond quickly when he says to, to move. Amen? That's our job. Listen and move. Listen and move. Would you stand with me? Oh, Father, I pray that you'll bless your people. God, I pray that your face would shine on them. God, that you'd give them peace. Father, that you would go with them and that you would give them the ability. Holy Spirit, remind each one of us, God, as, we, as soon as we begin to trust in something more than you, that we would shift our trust and say, you know what? Above all else, I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you in, in, in everything. There's no exception. I'll pour out my heart to you, Lord because you're my refuge. You're the one that keeps me safe and ready. And I pray that you go with the Lord, that he'd go with you, and that every single moment this week, you'll, you'll remember, remember to hold tight to your confident trust in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you if next Sunday, if not before. See you later.